Hello Internet. My name is The E-Man, and today I'm here to talk to you about a game called Star Wars Battlefront. It was released in 2004 for the consoles and PC, and in 2005 for the Mac. It was developed by Pandemic and published by LucasArts, it being a Star Wars game. It is a class-based first or third person shooter. Now, for the purposes of this video, any gameplay you see will be taken from the PC version. There's very little difference between the two versions, uh, graphics or gameplay-wise. Uh, however, the PC version contained an extra level, and the console version contained some extra options, including unlockable stills from the movies and tutorial videos that you could watch at any time from the options menu. The PC version does not include controller compatibility. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. There are the four main Star Wars factions featured in the game. There's the Rebel Alliance, the Empire, the Republic, and the Confederacy of Independent Systems. The gameplay is divided into three game modes. Historical Campaign, which is the story. It roughly follows the story of the movies, but mostly focuses on larger battles. There's Galactic Conquest, which allows you to conquer the galaxy using the faction of your choice picking planets from a sort of board game-esque menu. And then there's Instant Action, which allows you to create a playlist of your favorite maps. Some maps include AI-controlled forces of natives, like Genosians or Wookiees. They'll fight for whatever side they're loyal to. Some maps also have natives that'll attack both sides, like the Tusken Raiders, or will help both sides, like the Jawas. Scattered throughout all maps are three kinds of droids. Medical droids that heal you, gonk droids that replenish your ammo, and astromech droids that repair vehicles. Each faction has a planet. Hoth for the Rebels, Endor's Moon for the Empire, Kamino for the Republic, and Geonosis for the CIS. These maps are larger and except for Kamino have destroyable extra objectives. Although I swear to god I've still never been able to destroy the shield bunker. There are two objectives to every battle. To kill a set number of enemies, either 150, 200, or 250, or to capture all enemy command posts. Command posts are spawn points scattered around the map. They can be captured by clearing the area around them of enemies, and then waiting until they become controlled by your team. Each class plays pretty much how you would expect. They all have a class-specific weapon and a standard pistol sidearm. Each class also has a special piece of equipment. The soldier has a concussion grenade that sticks to vehicles. The sniper has a probe that can summon an orbital bombardment. The pilot can fix stuff and give out med packs. And the heavy has landmines, which are kind of sucky, but he has a bazooka, so really, it's all good. There are also the special classes. Each faction has its own special class. The Rebels have the Wookiee Smuggler, who is tough and has a crossbow grenade launcher and time bombs. The Empire has the Dark Trooper, who has a blaster cannon and a jump pack that allows him to traverse large distances quickly. The Republic has a Jet Trooper, who has a one-hit kill EMP launcher and a jet pack. And the CIS gets a Droidica. The Droidica can roll up into a ball and traverse the battlefield quite quickly, and can also unfold, deploy a shield, and use its double blaster cannons to kill anything in front of it. Now this unit's kind of hit or miss. When the computer plays it, it's basically invincible. But when you play it, your shield falls way too quickly and you die. When a unit is killed, they can drop a back to tank an ammo case, both of them stuck together, or neither. These can then be picked up by other players to replenish small amounts of their health or ammo. The game also has a wide array of vehicles. Some are even big enough to be mobile command posts, like the at, -AT. There are both land and air vehicles in the game, and all in all they control really well, even if the PC players don't always know how to use them very well. Oh, and speeder bikes. Those just suck, period. There's also nothing stopping you from taking vehicles from the other team, so weird combinations like this can happen. There are also hero characters. These are PC-controlled Jedi or Sith, depending on what faction they fight for. 
they can basically one-hit kill anything and are invincible. Unless you pull off a landmine trick shot. I guess landmines are good for something. For instant action, they can be turned on or off from the options menu, so playing with them is up to you. The game will automatically be set to start in either third or first person, however this can be changed at any time by pressing the Q key. The PC version also included a map of Jabba's palace, which was not released in the console versions. When the game came out, it did have online multiplayer powered by GameSpy, but of course it's no longer supported today. The game's menus are easy to navigate, and all loading screens between levels are short and covered up by satellite zoom-ins of the map, which are kinda cool. The game does still run pretty well today, although on a Windows 8.1 computer it needs compatibility mode. And even then, there are some glitches and random crashes. Now, this was the first game I ever played, back on the PS2. And I think it holds up very well today. I would definitely give it a 9 out of 10 score. And I'd even go as far as to say it's one of the best Star Wars games ever made. I'd definitely recommend picking up a copy of it if you ever saw one anywhere. I've been the E-Man. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I hope to see you again on the next episode. Goodbye.